Do you frequently lose money when playing poker? Are you blaming bad luck for those thousand dollar downswings? Do your friends invite you over to their poker games and then proceed to annihilate you hand after hand? Well, here are 13 signs that you're probably a bad poker player. Number 1. You play too many hands. The biggest error made by inexperienced or terrible poker players is playing far too many hands. Weak aces, jacks, queens or kings, too many double gap connectors and too many suited garbage hands lead to tough situations on the flop, turn and river. You'll find yourself bleeding chips and constantly folding to post flop bets or even worse, you'll get a ton of money in when you are totally dominated. Poker needs discipline to be successful. This is what allows you to wait for that perfect hand without jumping the gun. For those who are easily bored or impulsive, poker is not the game for you. While it isn't exciting to sit down, hand after hand, your wallet will thank you in the morning. Nowadays, preflop charts are easily available and preflop poker is almost solved due to them. Just by remembering the opening and 3-bet ranges, you can stay ahead of most of the poker population. Avoiding this glaring problem will also greatly cut down on problem number 2, you chase too much. You are a fish to put it plainly. To attempt and hit a straight, flush, second pair or even that filthy ace, you always stay in the hand. Even if it's not always a terrible idea to call on a draw, especially if you're receiving the appropriate implied odds, chasing cards all the way to the river will cost you money. In addition, other players will start to punish you with bigger bets. Just learn some basic poker math related to pot odds and implied odds and you'll be good to go. Rule of thumb tighten up for your own benefit. Number 3. You are a calling station. Making a call when you are clearly beaten and having your opponent flip the winning hand is the worst feeling in the world for a poker player. Regardless of whether the bet is small or not, you should mug the hand if you believe you are being beaten. Your bankroll will gradually be eaten away by all of these small bets over time and before you know, you won't have anything left. Tighten up, stop paying off your opponents and stop trying to be a hero. Number 4. You limp and cold call too much. Limping means entering a pot by just calling the big blind amount when the action gets to you instead of raising. Cold calling is to call a raise after there has been a bet and one or more player raises. It's rarely a winning play because it accomplishes none of the main goals you should aspire to. It does not thin the field, it doesn't help you define your opponent's holdings, misses an opportunity to take control of the pot and it can put you in tricky situations. Sometimes though, limping and cold calling can be a viable option. These situations are exceptions that confirm the rule and you need to recognize them as such. All in all, you should stop limping and cold calling for a few sessions altogether and try to only raise or fold when you decide to play a hand. Stick with this approach for a little while and keep track of your results. When you draw the line after a couple of months, you'll likely see that you are doing much better. Number 5. Posting a blind out of position. These are the players who are itching to play and no wonder another sign of a bad poker player. They literally cannot wait the 2 minutes it's going to take for the blinds to come around to them. They want to play and they want to play now. In other words, they cannot wait to get involved with far too many hands and give all their money to you. Paying for blinds more frequently than necessary is just not practical given that poker is a long term game and that each session is really a continuation of the previous one. This would be the same as paying your taxes twice, a rational person would never do it. Number 6. Buying in with a weird stack. Here's a simple rule of thumb. If you see a player buy in with anything other than 100 big blinds, you can easily mark that player as a fish. A game featuring full buy ins allows for the full gamut of strategy of no limit poker to come into play. 100 big blind cash game poker is the complete game, allowing for bluffs, finesse, re steals, squeezes, traps, and all other bits and pieces that make poker such a dynamic game to play. A player buying in with a short stack clearly has no idea of these concepts and is just there to play recreational poker. Also, if a player buys in with something as weird as $7.10 in a NL10 game, it screams the fact that this is his entire online bankroll and shows a total disregard for proper bankroll management. Number 7. You play recklessly or you play scared. If you want to gamble, 
head to the craps or roulette tables because poker is not for you. There are players who open random hands from any position, go all in with hands like Deuce 3 offsuit and then wonder why they are losing at poker. Stop trying to treat poker like a lottery and instead like a skill. Buckle down, focus on your weaknesses and avoid making mistakes. The opposite of playing like a crazy lunatic is playing like a wimp. Many players will only play the nuts because they are so terrified of losing big pots. They frequently fold made hands out of fear that they would be sucked out which just makes the situation worse. Caution is one thing, pure blown paranoia is quite another. You must play with a bit of bravery and overcome your fear of losing pots. Number 8. You play outside of your bankroll. The goal of poker is to make money, not get respect so don't feel bad about playing with modest stakes. Finding a poker game where you have an advantage and don't have to put a lot of your money at risk is the secret to winning. Even if you have a significant advantage, you shouldn't risk a significant chunk of your bankroll since all it takes is one slip up or unfortunate hand to leave you bankrupt as a joke. Everyone wants to take on the pros and win but let's be honest, there are pros for a reason. There are no awards for playing on hard mode. Instead, do yourself a favor and destroy the amateur games. Number 9. You bluff too much. We have all seen Tom Duan pull off some crazy bluffs in the past and watching him makes you want to do the same. Many new players think that to be good at poker, you have to be good at bluffing. Pulling off some amazing monster bluffs might be immensely rewarding but there's also a possibility it could go horribly wrong and lose you a ton of your hard earned chips. Unfortunately, some players play too many hands and play recklessly which causes them to bluff excessively and be called down. By choosing your position carefully rather than recklessly hurling chips at the pot at random, you may easily break the vicious cycle. Keep in mind that for the bluff to succeed, your opponent must be able to place you on a strong hand. Number 10. You tilt too easily. Being somewhat depressed after a run of unfavorable cards is one thing losing your cool and forgetting how to play poker is quite another. There is no justification for acting rashly at the poker table even if Phil Hellmuth popularized the concept of poker blowups. You don't want your ego to be in charge of making judgments that might cost you actual money since strong emotions can make it difficult to think clearly. Take a step back and give yourself a timeout if you ever feel like you're losing control at the poker table. Number 11. You underbet post flop. This is another pretty clear sign of a weak poker player. No good player would ever do that because it gives the other players almost no incentive to fold at all and clear odds to call with basically any draw. These guys are often older gentlemen weaned on 2-4 limit hold'em playing at the local casino in the early bird game. Their sole purpose in life is to dribble away their money one min bet at a time. The tiny post flop bets they continually make accomplish nothing. They don't price opponents out from calling when they have a bad hand. And they apply essentially no pressure to get anyone to fold. Number 12. You have a big ego. Sometimes ego can just ruin everything. If you have a problem accepting defeat then that should be a telltale sign for you. Even the best poker players know they cannot win them all. Sometimes. It all comes down to luck. Accepting these facts and letting go of your pride and ego are crucial factors to not letting your emotions take over the game. This will just lead you to impulsive decisions and a poor outcome. Number 13. You don't see the big picture. Everything we do is half chance. We can always strive to narrow down these odds with knowledge and strategy but there will always be that luck factor. Having a grasp on the bigger picture is crucial. Each individual game does not matter as much as the lessons you take from them and turn it into opportunities for improving. Bad poker players cannot see beyond the moment. It's important to be able to have perspective in order to deal with the inevitable swings of poker. If you want to be a good poker player, you must learn and recognize and beat players worse than you consistently. The lack of talent and experience of these players should be exploited after all Poker is a game where money is made from mistakes of your opponents. Most importantly, you should aim at finding the weakest player at the poker room or table you are playing at. The profits will follow on this simple practice. Bad players tend to make the same errors over and over which makes it easy to identify them. Once you have determined that a player at the table lacks experience and skill, make sure to grab a seat. 
focus on exploiting their tendencies and don't ease up on the pressure until all of their chips have moved towards you. This video is powered by Bluff the Spot, the best place to learn how to win at poker from actual high-stake coaches like MMA Sherdog. Check the link in the description.